Under shining headlamps, the caves of Sturkfontein reveal their imposing depths. Mere kilometers from Johannesburg, South Africa, this has been one of Laurent Broussel's geomorphic research sites for over 10 years. This cave was formed five million years ago. Exploitation by mining companies in the early 20th century led to the discovery of a treasure, the remains of an Australopithecus. At the bottom of this cave, a team of paleoanthropologists made an exceptional discovery, a nearly complete skeleton they named Littlefoot. He was here. We could see the base of his skull, and there was a humerus underneath. The left arm was outstretched, with its hand closed around its thumb. There was a bit of a collapse on the sides here, which left the vertebrae and pelvis mixed up. And higher, we have the femurs and part of the tibia, which were broken. It's this exact spot that Ron Clark's team found and located the broken tibia. We have to imagine that when they found these fossils, in an era before all this was excavated, there was a wall here, and the whole mine would have been dynamited. So they came really close to Littlefoot, thankfully stopping at his feet. How was this body trapped down here to begin with? Broussel's team believes Littlefoot must have fallen over 30 meters from the surface and that the atmosphere and geology of the cave preserved his skeleton. Up on the surface, the countryside probably resembles what Littlefoot would find familiar. The 47,000 hectares of this site contain the most concentrated collection of ancient hominins discovered in the African continent an exceptional density which earned Sturkfontein the title Cradle of Humanity by UNESCO in 1999. These fossils cover a period ranging from one to four million years ago, during which the Homo genus, our first direct ancestors, appeared on Earth. As we reflected on the origins of humanity and on the notions of our birthplace, East Africa held the strongest thread running between ancient fossils and the appearance of the Homo genus. Until now, South Africa was considered way too young. The oldest fossils here were dated at 2.2 million years old. When we found Littlefoot, we reran our dating based on the stratigraphy and found he was 3.7 million years old, which begins to reshape South Africa's history into some something resembling East Africa's. There's suddenly no reason to think that hominins couldn't have been anywhere. It's just that until now, we hadn't come across such a geological trap. To place ourselves in the hominin story, the group of large apes we belong to, Laurent Broussel collaborated with Ron Clark, the paleoanthropologist who discovered Littlefoot. In a hangar located in Sturtfontein, Professor Clark continues these excavations to place Littlefoot within humanity's timeline. Thanks to Broussel's geological analysis, he was able to date Littlefoot at 3.7 million years old. But to learn more about this Australopithecus, he would need to look more closely at its skeleton. Contained in the basements of Witts University in Johannesburg, a vault-like room. Here lie the most precious fossils discovered in South Africa, including those of Littlefoot. It was the discovery of a lost fragment of foot within this collection that enabled Ron Clark to discover this skeleton within the cave of Sturkfontein. In less than two days, his team succeeded in rediscovering the bone fragment and led to the discovery of the entire skeleton. Unlike the famous skeleton of Lucy with only 40% of the bones preserved, Littlefoot's is considered complete at over 95%, giving us a fuller picture with the skull, limbs, and even the left hand intact. After um, I'd cleaned the skull, I was able to tell that it was an elderly individual with heavily worn teeth. Um, now, elderly, by those standards, were probably in the in 30 years old and between 30 and 40 years old. 
uh, if we compare them to the modern apes, was quite short, maybe one meter 30 in, in height. And also I was able to determine that it was most probably female. The other um, point of interest is that the morphology of the skull shows that it belongs to a second species of Australopithecus. So at Sturkfontein, we did have fossils of Australopithecus africanus, but we also had fossils of this second species, Australopithecus prometheus. Beyond details like her diet, this Australopithecus prometheus reveals some small secrets about her cognitive abilities. Is the base of the mandible. Mm. It's always very this is the work of researcher Amelie Baudet, who uses advanced technology to dive into the brain of Littlefoot. Witts University is equipped with a microtomographic scanner, which enables the discovery of minute details within her skull. These images reveal the bone and sediment included within the cranial vault, along with the imprint left by the brain on the internal surface. Thanks to this data, Amelie Baudet developed an endoskull, a 3D model of the cranial cavity, which enabled scientists to create a replica of Littlefoot's cerebral structure. We've observed a number of imprints of Littlefoot's endocranium, notably on the anterior part of the brain, the frontal lobes. A lot of the imprints we can see can be compared to other hominin fossils, particularly other Australopithecus, and we see a structural similarity between Littlefoot and more recent Australopithecus. On the other hand, for the posterior, which looks like what we call the occipital, we can see a notable difference within the structure of her visual cortex. This is an important detail we'll explore. Why is it that we don't find this structure, that's over three million years old, in the Australopithecus who are closer to actual humans today? Clearly these details merit further investigation. We'll be using our 3D models to study this. Advances in technology will enable an even deeper analysis of this nearly four million year old skeleton. The discovery of Littlefoot has paved the way for new geological surveys. In identifying other sites with similar geological characteristics to Sirkfontein throughout southern Africa, scientists could discover the fossils of yet more ensnared bodies, the trapped clues to retracing the story of humanity.